BC's favorite senior lifestyle magazine comes to life. Join us as Senior Living goes on location to bring you the inspiring, informative, and entertaining adventure-filled stories of seniors in your community. Senior Living on Location. Changing the definition of aging. Celebrating seniors living life to its fullest. Join Senior Living on Location, meet some compassionate grannies, discover where ex-pilots spend their spare time, and travel the Gulf Islands on a budget with a local senior travel writer. But first, may we introduce you to the Cotton de Tulliar. All puppies bring out the softer side of humanity, and they're also beneficial to your health. They're known to lower blood pressure and give unconditional love and companionship. Dogs can enhance the lives of youths and adults, especially those with disabilities and or those who live in continuing care facilities. Senior Living on Location met up with a very unusual breed and a woman that has put her heart and soul into breeding these extraordinary puffballs called Cotton de Tulliar, or simply Cotton. One thing led to the other that I had seen a, a picture of a coton in the magazine. And you know, sometimes there is fate in your life. And I found out that the lady that lives beside my sister breeds coton de chiliar, and then bing, bang, boom, that's my cue, this, this is meant to be. Before retiring, Diane had a successful career breeding horses at her ranch. It was a passion of hers. But as she started getting older, she developed arthritis, which made it difficult to handle, ride, and manage them. And the final event that ended her passionate career with horses was when she was critically injured by a mare, nearly ending her life. Miraculously, she survived the surgery, and with the help of her husband, she made a full recovery, but then realized she was missing something, a passion she can pursue in her retirement, and the cotton made its way into her life. It's their love for people. They love people. Um, they have a joie de vivre that is very exceptional. They have an intuition that is exceptional. They will feel people. They will feel your emotion. And that's why they make very good therapy dog. We call, we call the coton the therapy dog. Um, they seem to understand the need of a person. If you're sad, they will understand and they will stay at your feet and they won't move and take care of you. And if you're happy, they will have so much stamina, just like a big dog. So it's, it's a small dog in, in appearance, in physical, but as a matter of fact, it is a big dog because they think like a big dog. With a beautiful stable property at her disposal, now called Cotton Field, and a passion for animals of all shapes and sizes, Diane was inspired to follow her passion for her pooch and embarked on a new career in her retirement, the breeding of this unique canine that not too many people are familiar with. Throughout its history, the Cotton de Tulliar was kept as a companion. The breed was once known as the Royal Dog of Madagascar and was only allowed to be owned by the elite, which threatened the complete extinction of the breed during the 1800s. They not only make an excellent family dog, but are known to be a great therapy dog for children, adults, and seniors with physical and mental disabilities. Diane herself gets a huge health boost from these animals and believes that they have a healing power. As a result, Diane has committed herself to becoming a champion for the Cotton de Tulliar. But her new passion was not a smooth transition. While having experience in horse breeding and the knowledge associated with it, she and her business partner, Cindy Robinson, who bred the cotton, discovered there was a genetic marker that predisposes them to a disease called Banderas syndrome, a genetic mutation that results in a neurological disorder that causes an inability for the animal to walk. They were not moving as, as fast. They were not as responsive to many things and they had a little bit um, they look a little bit like swimmers and then when they're six weeks old I'm thinking no there's something really wrong so I had heard that um, there's this doctor in, in Missouri that does research on different ataxia um, and so I contacted him and I said I have little puppies that I think they might have that genetic disease called Banderas. Sadly, her new litter did not survive. 
Diane donated the organs to the Medical Sciences Department at the Missouri University to further study this disease, which is similar to one that also affects children. It was discovered that if both the male and female dogs have the genetic marker, then the pups will be affected. If only one cotton is affected, Banderas will not show up. As a result, Diane tests all her dogs and potential studs before breeding. She wanted to bring her discovery to light so cotton breeders will not go through what she had to endure. So she made a movie with her partner, created a website, and put it out there for all to see, with the purpose of explaining Banderas syndrome in a way that breeders and others can understand. So we, we did this movie and we, we didn't know what was gonna happen because if I want to be a breeder, who's going to buy my puppies after we do this movie? So we took a big chance, but I said, I don't care if I never sell a puppy, this is more important. So we had from people from all around the world said, you know, that, that they were happy to do their testing. And some people didn't know they had carriers and they were able then to be careful and never get affected puppies. So it was very good for the breed. Um, and certainly uh, a good experience, a very good experience. And I'm so glad that, I'm so glad it happened to me because I was able to do something with it where, you know, I don't know, I don't know if somebody else would have done it. Bringing this topic to light was a risky and controversial move for Diane, but the good news is that over the past year or so, more than 300 dogs have been tested for the genetic mutation. The purpose of genetic testing is to help breeders adjust their breeding program to avoid breeding puppies that are born with Banderas syndrome. The hope is that they can eliminate the syndrome through education and cooperation. There's not a, nothing better than this, my little darling. Diane is so passionate about her dogs that she's now the West Coast representative for the Canadian Cotton de Tullier Club. In fact, the CCTC is the only national club for purebred cottons in the country. To find out more about this breed, check out the Canadian Cotton de Tullier Club for the latest news and responsible breeders, or visit seniorlivingmag.com for more information. Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media, celebrating seniors in our community. Ever wonder what happens to retired pilots? Well, Senior Living on Location found out. They end up in a museum. But not to fret, they're all alive and well and continuing their interest in the world of aviation. To be exact, you can find these ex-pilots and engineers at the BC Aviation Museum on Vancouver Island. The museum is dedicated to preserving aircraft and relics of importance to Canadian and British Columbian aviation history. The center collects, restores and displays artifacts and is a known tourist destination for aviation buffs coming to the island. I retired from Air Canada's uh, pilot on the A340 uh, in uh, 2007. And we had, <clears throat> this airplane had been sitting outside at the museum for uh, three years at that time and kind of going nowhere. And so we were essentially drafted, a group of us, to start working on it. And we were laughed at and why are you doing this? Because it, when we started this res restoration, it was a bit like eating an elephant and it would just, how do you start? The museum is operated by a group of dedicated volunteers, many of whom are seniors. Volunteers are actively involved in aircraft restoration, construction, engine displays, modeling aircraft, maintaining artifacts, and creating memorials to significant figures in the world of aviation. This is a Vickers Viscount, uh, first introduced by TransCanada Airlines in uh, 1955, January. Uh, it was the first turboprop uh, jet-powered transport in North America, first one to fly the Atlantic, and uh, this is about mid-range. Uh, TCA had 51 airplanes. Uh, this is about halfway through the series. Uh, it's configured the way it would have been in 1956, which is in 40 seats. 
The seat pitch, which is the distance between the back of the seat and the, and the seat in front of it, is 39 and a half inches uh, for all seats. That is the same as executive class would be today. So if you look at this airplane, it's basically a Dash 8, but better. <laughs> Well, there's a number of changes over the years. Some would call them improvements. I wouldn't. But uh, uh, up here, you notice there's no doors because people didn't have carry-on luggage. <laughs> they had hats and coats, but the coats actually were hung up in the back. And as you came on, you put them in the seats. <clears throat> the windows, now, the windows are huge compared to today. And uh, this airplane still flew at 25,000 feet. It was a pressurized airplane. But it's the shape of the window that gives it the strength. And there's a great long formula as to why it was designed this way. But uh, it, it, it gave a view that nothing has today. Some volunteers have expertise or past experience in the aviation industry, while others are newcomers but still maintain a strong interest in aircraft. I love being around airplanes. You know, uh, when, I, when I retired from the military, um, I stayed in the commercial aviation world, flying in the commercial aviation world, and then uh, I moved here from Calgary to manage a private jet. And um, I visited the Air Museum here and was so impressed with the people and what's going on here, I decided that when I retire, I want to be a part of this because it's, it's become a passion with me. Been around airplanes all my life in Europe and in North America and Canada. And um, when I came here and saw what the guys were doing, I said, you know what, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this team. And it's a great bunch of guys. There is so much work goes on behind the scenes here, you know, that makes it an amazing place to come to. This small group of senior volunteers is in the process of restoring a number of different aircraft. One project the group is currently working on is the restoration of a plane that was owned by the BC government in the 60s and used in flying Phil Gillardi. Flying Phil, also known as Sorry Phil, was a politician and best known for his service as Minister of Highways from 1955 to 1968. But that's another story in itself. What makes this place a success with visitors and volunteers alike is an enthusiasm for aircraft and its history. And for those who are lucky enough to enjoy a career in aviation, they can continue their passion here after retirement. I was a pilot, uh, and, and pilots don't know anything about how airplanes are built, really. Uh, they know how to fly them, and, that, and, that's, and my interest is, was in aviation, and uh, this is a great place for it. What could be more exhilarating for a bunch of older guys than to get together, reminisce, pull out the power tools, and get their hands dirty and enjoy their favorite pastime, working on a plane? Some aviation enthusiasts who don't have the luxury of coming here to work on a plane can purchase kits, but Bob here has some advice for these handymen. It's, a, it's a, called a Miranda. It uh, is an airplane that you build from a, from a set of plans. You buy the set of plans and uh, put it together yourself. They call it a home build. You can build it in your garage. Just make sure you can get it out when you got it finished. But uh, that's happened before. People have built airplanes in their basement and never got them out. So there you have it. Make sure you have large doors. Here's a group of seniors with a passion for aviation history that meets weekly to work on the restoration of aircraft. Some are using knowledge and skills from the past. Some are learning new skills. Who knew that senior volunteers could be of such value to aviation history? Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media, celebrating seniors in our community. This is a story about a woman whose life is just about perfect when it comes to enjoying life to its fullest upon retiring. Meet Jane Cassie. She was a nurse by trade, but now she's having fun as a travel writer. She travels with her husband and girlfriends and family, and it's free. All she does is write about her experience. Now, who wouldn't love doing something like that? 
and it all kind of fell into place one day. My husband and I wrote a book a long time ago together, co-authored a book, and from there we ended up writing about places where couples could go, so getaways in BC where people could find a little bit of romance and just get away for the weekend. So we'd establish a website, it was called greatestgetaways.com, and uh, I started getting affiliated with a number of papers in the province. So we did that for a few years, and then we sold the website and I started freelancing for magazines. And Senior Living Magazine is just one of her publications where you can read up on some great and relatively inexpensive places to visit or take a mini break. When Senior Living on Location caught up with her, Jane had a couple of her friends and Salt Spring Island on her travel agenda. When you read up on her experiences, you can see how traveling as a senior has changed for her over the years. And as a result, she favors destinations and budgets to please those entering their golden years. Life slows down a little bit, but surprisingly not that much anymore. Uh, seniors are very active. I've written some, an article actually for Senior Living just on, I think it was called Ready to Go, just on how seniors don't, I mean, they don't tend to go for the uh, ho-hum kind of bus trips and, uh, you know, train rides so much. They go for a little bit of the soft adventure. Uh, women retreats are big because there's a lot of women traveling on their own or wanting to travel with companionship um, and they might not have a spouse or partner so um, the sister retreats are big going with family members um, yeah there's all kinds of different types of, of retreats and tours out there um, uh, BC Ferries even offers great tours they have awesome packages that you can actually book through BC Ferries and you can you know travel all over the province the trip to Salt Spring is just one example of the diversity of adventures available to active seniors. Isn't it great being able to be here, like within just, you know, a short ferry ride and the classes, yeah, right? so much to do. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah. I love the fact that we can travel free as seniors midweek. I mean, that's so great, you know, get on as passengers. Yeah. And there's so much to do. I mean, we can take the tour guides. We've got lots of tour guides that we're offered. And BC Ferries offers you know, like all these package deals that you can you can book from Whistler to Williams Lake. We could go horseback ride right up at Williams Lake or go to the spa in Whistler. What do you think? Sounds I good. think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready for my pedicure. Yeah. Why don't we just pick up some food at one of the local markets and we've got the, the, all the bakeries in town. We can yeah. choose our bakery, pick up some wine, or maybe go to the one of the vineyards. Why don't we do that? I and we'll, like that. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a little picnic. Yeah. We can have a when picnic you... and then we can go to some of the galleries. Yeah. There's so many. There's like that the studio studios. tour, those studio yeah. tour that goes all around the yeah. island. And if you're on a budget, BC Ferries is free during the weekdays. So whether you pick up some food from a local grocery store or bring your own, you can explore the islands, have a picnic, go shopping or hiking, visit local artisans. It's really up to you how you choose to enjoy your adventure. Jane and her pals did it all and decided upon a local vineyard, Mistaken Identity, to have their lunch and enjoy some great local wines. Welcome to Mistaken Identity Vineyards Barrel Room. Um, I'm going to ask each of the ladies to grab a glass, of, uh, glass here and we'll go on up to one of the barrels here and we'll do a little barrel sampling. And we're one of three wineries on Salt Spring Island alone. Um, down here in what we like to call the Wine Islands region, so excluding ourselves from the Okanagan, which is a warmer climate, we have cool climate grapes out here. We're building our regional identity here as the Wine Islands group, growing cool climate grapes and making coastal crisp white wines. As Jane reminds us, even if you don't have a lot of money to spend, there are many local travel adventures seniors can enjoy. The West Coast, for instance, offers an endless supply of amazing senior-friendly destinations and vacation packages, which are all easily accessible by car or ferry. Growing older and retiring from your lifelong career doesn't mean staying home and retiring to your couch or garden. Seniors with the time, freedom, and resources are adventuring all over the world. While there are still senior bus trips available, that form of travel is really only one of many different travel options and lifestyles available to seniors in today's world. In fact, some seniors are turning traveling itself into a new career by becoming travel writers. Travel is only limited by the imagination. So this is our rosé. It's made from our Zweigeld grapes mm -hmm. and our Pinot Noir. And it goes Excellent. lovely with your cheeses. Oh, oh beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Cheers, lady.
Senior Living on Location is produced by Senior Living Media, celebrating seniors in our community. Training for their annual cycle event, these ladies, or in this case, grannies, are doing more than showing off their healthy lifestyles. They're part of the Grandmothers for Africa, the Victoria chapter, which boasts over 150 women doing just about everything to raise funds and awareness for the Stephen Lewis Foundation. Uh, sister grandmothers in Africa have no rest. They do this job 24-7 with very limited resources. And so we as grandmothers in Canada can raise money to um, support their very challenging daily lives. When Stephen Lewis returned from Africa in 2006, he brought with him a mission. And that mission was to help grandmothers in Africa find the financial, educational, and support resources they needed to better care for their grandchildren, whose parents had died of AIDS. As a result of Lewis's passion and determination, grandmothers in Canada set up chapters coast to coast, including our Victoria chapter, and every year, these innovative ladies do some amazing large-scale projects, such as national walks, craft and food markets, and fairs, as well as their annual cycling tour each year to raise funds for their charity. The unique concept about this group of seniors is that they're all women of different backgrounds and interests, but with a single focus, helping other grandmothers. They use whatever skills, interests, and knowledge they have to fundraise, and everyone is welcome to join. This truly is Seniors Helping Seniors on an international scale. Do you have a great story idea about seniors living life to the fullest? Senior Living would love to hear from you. Your inspiring story idea could be featured in an upcoming episode on Senior Living on Location or in our monthly BCY Senior Living Lifestyle magazine. To send us your idea, visit our website at seniorlivingmag.com and follow the links to our Contact Us page or simply email us at production at seniorlivingmag.com.